Hey everybody, I'm Pierre Piscatelli, and today I'm going to teach you how to play everywhere. Let's start with the introduction, which of course is the most difficult part, simply because it's fast. You might have to build up some technique over a couple of days or even weeks. That's totally okay. So what we're going to do is put our pinky in the right hand on E, and then below, use your third finger to play C sharp, second finger on B, thumb on G sharp. Push all four of these notes down together. Right, just make a block chord out of it. So from bottom to top, you have G sharp, B, C sharp, E. From top to bottom, E, C sharp, B, G. Okay, now hold your pedal down and try rolling the notes from top to bottom. And then without repeating this bottom note, the G sharp, roll back up. So the whole cycle, top to bottom, and then bounce right back up. See that? Again. Now to make it an endless loop, we're going to do the same thing when we arrive back to the beginning of that lick. I'm not going to repeat the E. I'm not going to go... Right? Then it's not smooth. We can't start and stop like that. So to make it endless, it has to look something like... Before I forget, if you guys are enjoying this video or finding it to be helpful, please consider subscribing. It's so helpful for the growth of this channel. Thank you. Thing like this. Up. Down. See what I'm doing? G sharp B, C sharp E, C sharp B, G sharp. So that's something that you have to work up gradually. So if that's easy for you, your way up slowly, day by day. Right, that takes time. Even what I just did there, I can't do it for more than 10 or 15 seconds. I start to cramp up. So also what you want to do, maybe to make things easier, is when you play the E with the pinky, accent that note. Give it a little bit of a push because that's your downbeat. Those are the big beats. One, two, three, four. Otherwise, you don't really feel like you're anchored to anything. You feel like you're floating. If you were to read this rhythm on paper, these would either be sextuplets, which are a group of six notes that fit into a beat. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. See how that works? And each one's a beat. Two, three, four. Or you could think of it as two sets of triplets, 16th note triplets per beat. So triplet, triplet, two. Triplet, 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 triplet. I like the sextuplets better because why not just think about a big group of six? One, two, three, four, five, six, three, four. So a full measure like that is going to happen eight times in the intro. So you have to build up some endurance. It's something like this. Six, seven, eight, eight bars. It's pretty long. So what is your left hand going to do now? Well, you have two choices. You can either do the synth pads that play chords, which are something like this. I think that's really pretty. That's happening underneath the uh, right hand part that I just showed you for sure. And there's also another part that goes like this. Now we don't have three hands, so you can't do all three, but depending on the size of the ensemble you're gonna play this with, maybe you're just playing it by yourself, with a singer, maybe in a band with 10 people, you're gonna have to decide how you do these parts. I think no matter what, as a keyboard player, you have to do that. You can't get out of that. But the left hand really does have two choices like I just showed you. So let me show you the first one, which is the kind of chord pad, I guess we could call it, right? So we start with an A major chord, just A, C sharp, E, root position, easy. Then hold on to your pinky, which is A, but bring the other two notes down to B and D sharp with fingers four and two. You don't have to move the hand. Watch this. A, C sharp, E. Now A, B, D sharp. Now just play A, C sharp. 
go back. A, B, D sharp, you've completed a cycle. So back to the A major chord, A, B, D sharp, A, C sharp, A, B, D sharp. Again without talking. So with the right hand, that goes something like this. It's really nice. And last but not least, here's the other left hand option. You can do this. And that would repeat again. So it's G sharp. F sharp, then back to G sharp. Play the G sharp again. F sharp, B, G sharp. I'll do it again. So with the right hand, that would be something like this. Remember the intro is eight bars. Well, that part of the intro, anyway. There is a second half of the intro where the band starts to groove. Dun, 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 right, I'm sure you all know that part. So yes, this part that I'm about to show you also has a couple of options that you have to decide between. Now, one thing that the keyboard does not do in this second half of the intro is chords. All you really hear from the keyboard department is Just over and over, G sharp, A, G sharp, F sharp. Again. Then the verse. Do you hear me calling? Right, and it just keeps going. So if you're lucky to play in a big band, you can just do that with a basic string sound on a keyboard and you're doing your job. You can like guitar do chords, the bass do its thing, whatever. But if that bores you, or it's just not enough, or you're maybe playing the song by yourself, or you're in a smaller group, let me show you some other things you can do. So you can just play the chords, which are E major, looks like this, E in the left hand, G sharp, B, E, from bottom to top in the right hand, and then, B major chord, which is F sharp, B, D sharp, of course B in the left hand, and go between these two chords. Do you hear me calling, right? After you go between those three times, like this, second time, third time, you can play C sharp minor. Actually, C sharp minor seven is better, in my opinion. So C sharp in the left hand, G sharp, B, C sharp, E, right hand. And then A, which is A left hand, A, C sharp, E, right hand. So the whole progression. Like that. Now remember, we're still in the second half of the introduction, so that progression is going to happen twice and then in the verse, it's gonna be the same actually, and it's gonna happen another two times. So let me demonstrate that. Again. Here's the verse. time. So it happens a whole bunch of times between the intro and the verse. Right there would be the chorus. Now if you don't want to play chords like that, like I mentioned before, you can just do this. That's really all that the keyboard is doing, just playing that line. If you do want to play the chords that I showed you, but you're finding it to be a little bit stale, what you can do is learn the left hand bass line. So that's something like this. Mm -hmm. 
There are little variations each time, but that's the basic meat and potatoes of it. So let me teach you that. Left hand starts on E. I like the second finger. You'll see why in a moment. Play the E twice. F sharp with the thumb. And then B with your pinky right here three times. So again. And then you do something similar the second time. Let me do those two back to back. Now the third time will be just like the first one. And then get your middle finger on C sharp and work your way down to B A. So the entire thing. At the actual speed. And of course you can add in some dead notes, be a little playful with the rhythm like this. Right, the bass always does some dead notes, some little accents here or there, some differences, all that is good. But if you learn that left hand bass line, you can put that underneath the chords and get something like this. That's a nice accompaniment, right? So you have a whole bunch of choices here for the second half of the intro and the verse. Now I know I've given you a lot of options for this intro, second half of the intro and verse, but let me show you how I would put this together and what I would choose if I were performing this. So here we go from the top of the song. So that's an example of the parts that I would choose and how I would play it. Now for the best part. This is the chorus. Here's how it goes. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to play a B major chord in second inversion first because it sounds better that way. So right hand plays F sharp, B, D sharp. Left hand is B. I like octaves for some more volume. And you play it twice. And then move the left hand slightly to C sharp. And right hand very slightly to G sharp, B, C sharp, E. This is C sharp minor 7 just inverted. Here are the notes. So here's the move again. Just like that. Now we come down to A major. Again, this is inverted, so left hand is A. Right hand is E, A, C sharp. Just like that. I like one, two, four because of where we are about to go. You need three and five to be free. Next chord is the B chord you already did. So B left hand, F sharp, B, D sharp. You see how we need three and five? That's why I wanted you on two and four over here so that this is seamless. That way you're not just plopping your hand down like a, a cookie cutter, right? You should make this as seamless as possible. So all four moves look like this. Next. Now we're gonna do basically the same chords in a different order. So up to the C sharp minor seven, just like that. Down to the B major. A twice. To be. So the same thing, just in a slightly different order. And all eight of those moves of only three different chords 
equals the chorus progression. So here we go. We do that again. your chorus. I'll do it slightly faster. Just like that. Now if you can do all of that, you pretty much have all the material that you need to play this song. You're gonna go into an interlude after that, which is sort of like the second half of the intro. Well, not sort of, it is the second half of the intro and same musical part as the verse. So that could be either, if you decided to just play that easy string line, right? It would be that, or it would be, opted for that, or maybe just the chords. Right, essentially your three options, like I showed you earlier. So you're back to that, there's another verse, there's another chorus, right? I don't need to show you all that. Then there is kind of a bridge interlude, which is the introduction, it's this. Right, so that comes back. I don't need to play it all for you, plus the more I play, the more of a chance there is of me getting a copyright strike from YouTube, so I don't wanna play through the whole song too much. You know all these parts, I showed them to you, so you just have to listen to the song and see when these sections come up. The only thing I haven't shown you yet is the ending. There's an ending where they're just kind of hanging out on an E major chord, so what you could do for the ending is just play E with your left hand in eighth notes like this. I'm holding the pedal down too. And you can play E major with your right hand. I like G sharp, B, and E because it's a nice inversion, like that. So you can kind of just let that simmer for the ending, but I'll show you something else you can do. If you're playing in a larger ensemble and there's no need for you to be jamming on those chords because it's gonna make the bass player mad or the guitar player mad, you can just stick to your job and play the synth strings. There's a line that goes like this. Three, four, one, two. Again, two, three, four, one, two. Okay, it's kind of an ad lib part. It comes in a little bit randomly at the end, and then sometimes it just sticks with over and over. So you can kind of play with it at your discretion. So here's how the line goes. It starts with G sharp, A, B, E. So use three, four, five, one. It's easy if you do it this way. And let me show you where it comes in. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Right on beat three. And then I like to cross the hand over. Three goes on C sharp. D sharp with four. Five on E. Two on B. And that also comes in on beat three. One, two, right there. So the whole thing is one, two, three, four, one, two. One, two, three, four, one, two. Two, three, four, one, two. Two, three, four, one, two. Two, three, four. Sometimes they just stay here. When it really starts to fade out, they stay here. Like that. So you can kind of play around with it and do what you want there. But those are essentially the two things that I would do at the end, either the chords and that little bass line in the left hand, or the synth strings. That's pretty much it. So that is how you cover all of the parts in Everywhere. This is a masterpiece production by Fleetwood Mac. It's one of my favorites. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next one.